Hey everybody, welcome to this episode of Think Business Live. I'm looking forward to talking to Regan Olsey. Uh, Regan, you are nomadic, which means you just travel the world and uh, that is your office. And so thank you for calling in uh, from Italy. I appreciate it. And um, I'm looking forward to connecting with you and learning uh, with the Think community today about um, crypto and Web3. So we're going to we're going to dive into that, which I'm looking forward to. Um, to give everybody just kind of a little bit of a flavor of you, um, I first want to kind of just start by saying, you know, one of the things that I love about this podcast is I get to work with um, I get to work with great people and um, and get people unstuck all the time. And I love bringing on guests that can also get people unstuck. And you are in in the in the crypto and the Web three business. You are the founder of Minted Mojito. And you are a crypto educational platform dedicated to fighting the bro culture while building financial pre financial freedom for women in Web three. So let's let's um, let's back up for one second and just define crypto and Web three and kind of the foundation of what you're educating people on. Of course. So hello everyone. Thank you so much, Sean, for having me. Yeah. Thank um, you. <laughs> I'll start with Web3. Web3 is the decentralized future of the internet. And if you think about what Web1 was, which is essentially read, that was when Google first launched. Well, Google really actually wasn't even around in Web1. It's when there were landing pages that you could take a look at. Web2 allowed you to read and write. It allowed you to actually participate online. Social media started to pick up. That's the environment that we're currently in today. Web3 allows complete ownership. And so you'll hear the word ownership being thrown around a lot. And that's because in Web3, you have ownership over your data. You have ownership over the privacy around your data, um, the content that you produce, the content that you put up online. And it makes room or leaves room for creators to ultimately find remuneration to, um, through royalties, through partnerships. It makes it really easy to maintain that ownership over your content and material. Yeah. Yeah, but but can you uh, let's uh, can we younger it down even more? Because I yeah. think sometimes people are having a a difficult time understanding kind of how to wrap their arms around that. Yeah. So how, can you how can you what do you what's as you <clears throat> are educating people? How do you kind of productize that to make it you know easy to digest? Yeah, absolutely. So. The example that I typically like to give is think about posting on social media. You post a piece of content. That can be a picture of you and your friends, a picture of you and your family, maybe on a beach or at a restaurant, let's say, in Mexico. And that restaurant can, in theory, take that photo and reuse it for their own marketing purposes without giving you any benefit, any payment, any royalties on that prolonged use of the content. So they could use it for years on end and you wouldn't see it. You technically don't own that piece of content. Instagram owns that content and that restaurant yeah. can reuse it. In Web3, we have what's called a transparent ledger of transactions. And that can be a little bit complicated, but in essence, what it is, is this book where you can see exactly who created what piece of content, who was the first to transact what fund, for example, if I were to send funds to somebody else, who, you know, who was the first one to send those funds? Who was the first one to buy an NFT? You hear a lot about these digital tokens. You can see who the first one was and who anyone after that, who else ended up sending that to other people. Yeah. And that's really, really clear through Web3. So that's why you have complete ownership over the content um, and over your funds that you ultimately own in this decentralized world. Yeah. And I think many people will ask, where is <clears throat> where is Web3? It is everywhere. It, <laughs> it's on the Internet, though. And there's really no one place that Web3 is located. You can talk about the metaverse. The metaverse is just one facet of Web3. That's like Second Life has been around for years. That's where you can go and you have an avatar. Now you can actually online shop in the metaverse. You can... Um, shop at grocery stores, you can go to the movies in the metaverse. That's like your digital life. But really, Web3 exists all around us. It exists on different um, financial institution platforms, like you have exchanges like Coinbase or Kraken. Um, so it exists on the platforms that you know and love today. It just bridges yeah. a lot of the complexities and uh, that we find in Web2 and makes it much easier in this new space. 
Yeah, I love it. I love it. Um, so let's talk about you are fighting the bro culture while building financial freedom for women in Web3. So talk a little bit about that. Sure. So when I joined crypto in 2019, it was still called crypto at that point. Um, we transitioned to Web3, I believe, as of last year. But when I joined the crypto industry in 2019, I very quickly realized that there was a big problem of inclusivity. And I realized that because I would go online. I mean, inevitably, I was going to go online, try to ramp up in this space, try to learn what the heck I was going to go and work in. And all of the educational material was just absolutely riddled with jargon, had memes that were derogatory towards women. I mean, still, if you go through Reddit, you'll see slews of memes that are just derogatory towards women. I would go and attend conferences and you would see it, it just broke my heart. You would see five women standing on the side of or the sidelines, really, of the conference in the sea of men. And we would go and have conversations with the rest of the folks at the conference, but typically it ended up just separating these two groups for one reason or another. And I break that down to women are seen more as dating prospects in that pool of people than networking opportunities. And that's inherently because I have heard so many times, especially since launching Minted Mojito, the phrase, are women even interested in crypto? Which again is absolutely heartbreaking. Are women even interested in Web3? And there's this idea that there is no way we could be interested in the financial world, much less Web3 of this decentralized technology. It's too complicated, it's too mixed up. And I attribute that to the fact that the primary, primary group of early adopters, so the first people who started using crypto were male. And they were drawn to this anarchist, privacy-focused world. Crypto uh -huh. has since transitioned. But that culture has remained true even to today. And so through educational materials and courses, and by working with businesses, I'm really working to remove that, that bro culture, a lot of those biases that still remain, and hopefully open the door for so many women to go and discover their freedom. I define freedom in a number of ways. Um, but to go and find their freedom in this new space, because there just truly are so many opportunities for them to succeed and excel. That's great. Good for you. That's great. I love it. I love it. Continue to put your voice in uh, to, to elevate the frequency of what of what you're talking about. I love it. What's the responsibility? So so you're you're I thought you you stated that you, you explained that so beautifully. What's the responsibility now of the men to do our part? It's a great question. So the ultimate goal here is mass adoption. I mean, that's what we all want. Yeah. We want folks to move into Web3. We want to create an inclusive environment so everyone feels comfortable, so everyone feels that it's a safe space for them, because it truly is. There are so many communities for women, non-binary folks, men, whatever group you identify with, to go and find their space and their voice in this new industry. Yeah. My first piece of advice that I always give folks when they ask me this question is take a look at the group around you when you're at a conference. Take a look at the group around you when you're talking to your friends about crypto, when you're talking about crypto or Web3, because that will tell you a lot about how you might need to ultimately change the conversations you're having. I would wager that a lot of the time, most of the times, folks are having a conversation around crypto or finances with a very siloed group of people. Typically, men like to have it around each other. Um, and that's because men and women approach investing in, in different ways. Men look towards the short term gains and the short term, um, you know, the offers of investments. But women, we tend to look towards the long term. We look at how we're going to buy a home, where we look at how we're going to save for retirement, how we're going to put our children through college. We can talk about the societal pressure that's required for that, but it's inherent. And it also means that we end up having these separate conversations, bring those conversations together. That's my number one piece of advice for folks. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Um, you have a ton of free resources at mintedmojito.com. Uh, let's do a quick speed round, Regan. Uh, a book that's had the biggest impact on you. Digital Gold by Nathaniel Popper. It's All best right. book for anyone who wants to get ramped up in Web3. That's good. Digital Gold? Digital Gold. Okay, good. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, best yeah. piece of wisdom you've ever received? Um, what is is not always what ought to be by Simon Sinek. It's my favorite phrase, and I have brought it with me since I heard it about 
10 years ago. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a mm -hmm. good one. Uh, finish this sentence. One thing everybody needs to do to take the first step into crypto and Web3, even if it seems scary, is? Invest $10. Invest okay. $10 in an exchange of your choice. It's a low barrier to entry, low cost, and just watch it fluctuate. That's okay. what will get you. That's what will get you used to the risk involved with yeah. investing in this new market. Okay, I got it. I love it. I love it. Tell people who your ideal clients are and how they can connect with you, Regan. Absolutely. So, anyone who's interested or excited about onboarding into the Web three space, but you don't know where to start, please connect with me on social media. I'm available on www.mintedmojito.com. Um, and I'm always happy to hear from you at hello at mintedmojito.com as well with any questions. I love it. Regan, I, I appreciate you taking time to be on the show and I appreciate you tuning, uh, calling in from Italy. And um, what time is it there right now? Oh, it's uh, six o'clock, six. OK. All right. Good. Yeah. Uh, 1215 here. Yeah. So, um, uh, you know, think community minted uh, uh, mintedmojito.com if you have any questions and you can get a hold of Regan through that. But, you know, we started off talking about, um, you know, what is one thing that maybe will get us unstuck a little bit? And you said a lot of great things, Regan. But one thing that resonated with me, the community, is that we need to really zoom out and bring conversations together a little bit more. And, and, and for those who are, to be, even be a little bit more conscious about it with the right intent. And, and, and we all need to do our part. Um, Regan, I appreciate you taking time to be on the show. Any last thoughts? There is so much opportunity available in Web3, no matter how you identify, no matter which department you sit in. And I guarantee you'll find your space in your community. That's great. I love it. Thanks, Regan. Thanks, Thank everybody. You. Thanks, John.